Hello good folk of the tech world, it's Jacob here, ready to get into another PC Game Den hardware show. Yes, with the one and only Dave. And today we're going to be looking into what AMD has in store for Zen 2, the third iteration of the Zen architecture, including Zen Plus, but the first to bring significant changes to the tried and tested formula introduced back with Ryzen. Yeah, AMD is sprinting headfirst into 7 nanometer, and next year is when all of the red team's hard work could finally pay off. For the first time in a long time, AMD will have the process node advantage. And no, we're not counting its current 12 nanometer node as a genuine advantage over Intel's 14 nanometer process. That's mostly just marketing spiel. But AMD's Zen 3 is also supposedly ready in the works for launch as early as 2020. So with potentially only a year in the limelight, what's all the fuss about with Zen 2? We've already had our fill of Zen chips for the last two and a half years. Ryzen has been slowly chomping down on Intel's market share and showing just what AMD's team of engineers can get done with a little sand. According to the latest numbers from Mercury Research, the joint effort of AMD's entire CPU division, that includes Epic and mobile chips alongside the desktop processors, that represents 10% of the entire x86 market share. Not bad for a few years' work. But Zen 2 is set to be the most exciting change to the Ryzen DNA since it first launched. At the next Horizon event, AMD confirmed Zen 2 chips will be in machines in 2019. The event itself was focused on the data center, so that given launch date is ostensibly in reference to its current sampling 64-core Epic CPU. But that 2019 window will almost certainly extend into the desktop division too. And if AMD's previous desktop CPU launch is anything to go by, that likely means a March or April launch window for its consumer chips. The big boss of Team Red, Dr. Lisa Su, will be making a keynote speech over at CES in January, during which we're hoping AMD's CEO will let slip some news on upcoming desktop processors. If we're really lucky, we may even find out the brand name succeeding Ryzen. That's sure to be one keynote not to miss. AMD is already carefully dishing out precious samples of its Zen 2 silicon to a privileged few. Some of that wild silicon has been spotted and reported on already, with one chip claiming to be Zen 2 rocking 8 cores, a 4GHz base clock, and a 4.5GHz boost clock. Considering the Ryzen 7 2700X, AMD's top desktop CPU of the moment, which is 3.7GHz as its base and 4.3GHz boost, those are some seriously impressive clock speeds from what we can only assume to be a really early engineering sample. The first Zen engineering samples only ran at a measly 2.8GHz base and 3.2GHz boost, this silicon would eventually hit 4GHz boost in the flagship 1800X. Even a slightly more conservative upswing in frequency this time around with Zen 2 could be pushing beyond 5GHz. Now let's not get too carried away with clock speeds. I mean, they can't keep increasing exponentially every generation. But you can't help but salivate at the prospect of a 5GHz Ryzen chip. That would be immense. But just how many cores said chip would be running with is still up for debate. AMD hasn't confirmed the design, but its recently announced 64-core Epic chip is expected to utilize an 8-core CCX, as opposed to the 4-core CCX from the first architecture generation. That means, theoretically, AMD could just double its core counts on a dime. Could two chiplets and a moderate I.O. die fit into an AM4 package? Hell yeah, we reckon it could. And my framed picture of Kermit the Frog behind my desk is essentially equivalent to a degree in electrical engineering. Yep, sure it is. That might sound like serious overkill for gaming rigs, and you'd be right. It would make for incredible editing video creation chip though, potentially upsetting thousands of Threadripper owners in the process. Yeah, at least high-end desktop chip owners have PCIe lanes on their side, unless the X570 motherboards really crank up the lane count. AMD has said it's sticking to AIM4 until 2020, and that means up to Zen 3 by the current roadmaps. Whether or not that's including Zen 3, eh, we don't know. That could all depend on whether it supports the next generation of PCIe or DDR5. First gen Ryzen machines at least should be a simple swap and a BIOS update away from getting up and running with the latest Zen 2 silicon. Hooray. By far the biggest change to the Zen architecture with Zen 2, well, that we know of so far, is the extension of the modular design. AMD has been pretty canny with Zen, a CPU design that let it build tiny mobile chips all the way up to massive 32-core server-grade processors, all with the same basic principles. Zen 2 pushes that just a little further, separating out the processor dies from the I.O. die into discrete, interchangeable, interconnectable, and interdimensional chiplets. So, scrap that last one. Yeah, okay. Zen 2 isn't actually a wholly 7 nanometer CPU. It's rather a collection of 7 nanometer chiplets surrounding a 14 nanometer I.O. die. The 14 nanometer process offers fantastic yield, meaning only the cores themselves, the chips most in need of the die shrink, are actually built on TSMC's dense, expensive 7 nanometer node. Keeping those 7 nanometer chips apart from the rest means sorting functional, working silicon from the duds is easier and more economical than ever. 
That's how AMD can afford to actually ship such core happy chips at such consumer happy prices. It also means that the 7 nanometer chiplets can be smaller than the original Zen design. A 16 core pair of chiplets, 8 cores apiece, has a noticeably smaller footprint than the 8 core silicon used on the first Epic chip. With a centralized I.O., Zen 2 should also allow each and every core similar access times to your PC's pool of memory, effectively rendering Threadripper's gaming mode obsolete in its current form and mitigating some of the increased memory access latency for the most distant processing nodes. But it's the promise of increased instructions per clock, or IPC, that's most interesting to us gamers. AMD has improved branch prediction, instruction pre-fetching, and boosted floating point performance with Zen 2. All that within the same power envelope as past chips? Can't complain. The Zen 2 architectural improvements could make a serious difference where it counts. Gaming frame rates. Combined with higher clocks, Zen 2 at maximum gaming performance will be hard to beat. We don't have much in the way of solid proof of performance beyond AMD's claims of double throughput and TSMC's 25% extra performance for the same power guarantees. But as always, there are plenty of rumours to keep the old mill spinning away. Bits and Chips recently tweeted a 13% average IPC performance boost on Zen 2 in scientific tasks over the 12 nanometer Zen Plus chips. This was supposedly clock versus clock, so we could see some really impressive performance once clocks are pushed to the max on the 7 nanometer process. And that's what will make the difference this time around. Once AMD kicks Zen 2 out of the nest, fit to fend for itself thanks to the 7 nanometer process, Intel will still be stuck on the 14 nanometer node for the better part of a year. Chipzilla is currently touting a holiday 2019 release window for its own first 10 nanometer chips. Intel still holds all the cards when it comes to IPC lead over AMD's current Ryzen processors. But if AMD can get Zen 2 up to speed and doing more per clock than ever before, gaming performance will be a much closer contest. So if you're excited for AMD to step up its game in 2019, give us the like, subscribe and hit that bell. Why should we get a like? Because AMD is creating something new and exciting, you ask? It makes sense, just don't ask any questions. And if you want more of our words, but less of our faces and weird pronunciations, you can instead head over to PCGamesN.com for all things hardware and some games too. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. Peace! Peace.